Welcome to Try with Ping. This is Ping Robert, and in this podcast, we will cover a range of different topics from culture, languages, and underrepresented stories. Join me with a cup of chai and listen to these stories. Welcome to Chai with Ping. Today we have a very special guest. He's a very good friend of mine. We met at church, and then we serve in a worship team. And he's just a very talented musician. He plays guitar. He、uh, sings, and he also writes poetry. Re- recently,、um, he has a website. So you're, if you're interested, you can go ahead and、um, check it out. It's called nightanddaring.com. I will put the description in the、um, episode notes. And he has a pair of lovely Taiwanese parents, and they just cook so well. I love to go to their place, and and he loves to come to our place.、Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you Shang Tong. Hi, Sean. Hey, Ping. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Full <laughs>、uh, of joy. <laughs> so, so Sean is identified as an Asian American, and today we're gonna talk about two bigger chunk of、um, his experience around languages and identity and race. I think given this time in the U.S., it's really relevant.、Um, so I just want to start with a lighter note about languages. So, Sean, what do you speak?、Uh, so. Obviously, I speak English, but as another language that I speak is Mandarin Chinese.、Mm-hmm. Um, so, is that your home language, Mandarin?、Mm, I think this is where it's kind of、uh, complicated, I suppose, just because I am. I, I was born in a Chinese household, so it's like I learned to speak English and Chinese、mm-hmm. alongside each other. Yeah. So it wasn't just like, oh, I learned this language first, and then. This language first, yeah.、Uh, so it was just kind of like, yeah. I'm not. I, I'm not even sure if I were to think back which language I started learning first. Okay. If I were to guess, it'd probably be English, probably. Hmm. But they're all very close. They're both very close to each other in terms of which language I learned first. I'm interested to know, like, you, when you say you first learned English, did you mean that like a formal? Environment or like your parents actually spoke to you in English.、Uh, I would probably say in a formal environment. Ah, okay. Which is why I, I'm kind of like thinking it's like I think I learned these、uh, together because you know in the formal environment like most people speak English, but then at home my parents speak Chinese. So you know when I went home. Yeah, when I was at home, I, I'd be speaking Chinese to them rather than English. So, I mean, either way, my English and my Chinese were both pretty broken at a young age. You know, you gotta start somewhere. So, I know your parents are Taiwanese. Did they restrict you from only speaking Mandarin at home, or it's kind of a easy flow? It's kind of an easy flow, honestly. They were pretty flexible in what language I was speaking. They encouraged me. To speak more Chinese, but I was like, yeah, I don't want to because I'm bad at it. <laughs> ah, okay. And how is your parents' English? I would probably say my dad's English is better, though I do sense that he might be a little bit afraid of speaking sometimes too. But his his vocabulary is much more extensive than, than my mom's. I would say,、uh, oh. as for articulating words and. Everything I would probably say my my mom does actually you know articulating isn't quite the right word I, would, I guess I would just say that she's more assertive in the way that she speaks English and so at times it can sound a bit more aggressive that、oh. is essentially kind of like a struggle for her at times because of that or maybe someone has more to say and then you realize that the vocabulary is limited but when someone doesn't talk as much then、um, you don't realize how how much they can actually say or how little they can actually say is that yeah what, yeah、mm, okay part of that at least yeah、oh. it's I find it like it's it's pretty cool because like usually if there is a word that my mom doesn't understand she'll ask my dad. Mm-hmm. 
he's able to translate that into Chinese. Okay, so yeah. maybe maybe your dad does ha have um, a higher higher volume of vocabulary. Let's say that. <laughs> and Sean, how did you learn Mandarin as a child? Besides your uh, from your parents. So when I was younger, I did attend Chinese school, and it was like the worst time in my life. Honestly. Tell me more about the. I I I don't really know what kind of school that you went to. Tell me, tell us a little bit more about that. So I did attend the Colorado Language School, and that was like back when I was fifth or fourth grade, maybe even younger. No, I think, I think fifth grade actually. I don't even remember actually. I don't remember <laughs> what grade I was in. Yeah,、um, and so that's when you started. Yes, I started、okay. around that time when I was in elementary school. And going all the way up to twelfth grade. No, I I believe I stopped in tenth grade. Yeah, yeah. I think tenth grade. I might be wrong. It's not something I <laughs> I really remember. <laughs> that's okay. Um. So how. When when does that school happen, and how many hours do you take every week? So Chinese school happens each week, and it happens on a Sunday afternoon.、Mm -hmm. So I found myself a lot of time, you know, going to church and then going straight to Chinese school, rushing there, like having lunch and everything, and then attending the class. And you know, a lot of the times my <laughs> My Chinese teacher would usually glare at me, <laughs> or <laughs> like point to me because I'm misbehaving or like I'm not doing something very well. I think a lot of times, it's like you know, when I think back to it, you know, they're 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 trying to help me learn, but I wasn't in a place of like I want to learn Chinese. I was forced to be there. Honestly, it's like my parents put me there because they wanted me to get better at Chinese, but I didn't. Personally, want to like I'm like I don't care about this, so it was more of like I'm doing it because my parents. I can understand. Yeah, it's it's really hard to be in that place because you're just kind of like <sighs> I have to try and motivate myself to do something I don't want to do. You know. Well, is your um does your your experience similar to other classmates? Like are are. All those kids all forced to be learning Mandarin, or like some of them just they're very eager to to learn. Uh, you know, I never asked this of my other classmates before. Like, I've never asked this question, but I kind of always assumed that Chinese school for them was also a drag. They didn't want to <laughs> be there either. Yeah. yeah. So it's just a place that kids would go Sunday afternoon and to be there for a few hours. And do you guys do homework? Yes, we do homework. We practice the readings that they give for each week. Like for one whole Chinese school year,、uh, they give us like these practice books to like read stories in Chinese. Yeah.、And、I remember like when I was in the. The lower grades, like they had the ones that had like the book homophobia,、yeah. right next to the characters. So I, I、yeah. learned from like the Taiwanese way. Yes.、Uh, having those alphabet characters right next to the actual Chinese characters. Yes. And I remember just like reading those as a kid, and like yeah, you know, some of these, some of these stories are pretty interesting. Like there was one that was talking about the old man in the sea, and there was like another one that's like. I guess I'm like actually that's like the one that I, I remember the most. Other times it's like talking about like oh my 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 friend Pom wants to eat this kind of food, but my friend Pom's friend is <laughs> wants to share. I'm like ah he doesn't want to share. I'm like oh okay, and then, so it's like these basic conversations,、yeah. like、stories and things like that to help us like learn more. Sounds like a Pretty standard. I don't know. I I felt that that's similar to what I typically learn in Taiwan as a first language learner because like the articles, the styles, and、uh, even the class instruction. Do you find a difference between your Chinese、uh, school and teachers and your school teachers? Definitely. I think the way that the classroom is run inside the Chinese schools is usually a bit more. Lacks, I suppose. 
mm-hmm. and at least in my eyes, um, my own experiences, it's it's not as much to do because we're just learning Chinese and like taking tests, reading, but we're not like doing any other subjects in like my American school. We're like, hey, we're not only doing reading and writing or speaking because obviously everyone speaks English, but we're also doing math and science. And like, you know, we go from class to class, whereas Chinese school is literally just like one class yeah. of like a handful of students yeah depending on what grade you were in but at least my grade that i was in like I mean, we only had like we had like less than 10 students oh. each year yeah yeah and it, it got smaller and smaller as we got into the higher grades because people true, yeah. leaving and stuff like that yeah Mm. So it sounds like almost like a Bushi ban in Taiwan, like a cram school that people put their kids in for a few hours and then pick them up. I suppose I've never been in a cram school, obviously, because I, I grew up in America. I was yeah. born in America. So I don't know what that's like personally. I, I, I personally haven't been to one because I, growing up, I just didn't didn't go to Bushiban, but I heard a lot of people drag to go after schools. So, wow, thank you for sharing that. I mean, it's just fascinating to know, like, how many children are still learning Mandarin outside of um, the Mandarin-speaking countries. Um, so what about now? Like, we talk about learning Mandarin as a child. Uh, has it been different for you as an adult now? How do you learn, or did you just stop learning? So, you know, after I graduated my Chinese school, which, by the way, I passed with, like, a C. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, this is Sean. Sean speaking. This is his C. <laughs> yes. That's right. Yeah, so <laughs> after, after barely passing Chinese school with a C, I, uh, you know as I entered into or finished the rest of like, high school, you know, I still felt the same way about Chinese. Uh, like it wasn't something that I was really wanting to learn until probably my, the end of my senior year of high school, which is 12th grade. And then into college, that's when I started being more like, hmm, you know, like Chinese is something that I am blessed to know. It is one of the hardest languages to know, and I am refusing to want to learn it, to you know, practice it. And I felt like it was, it was a, uh, an unwillingness for me to like open up. But when I got into college and I started talking to more people, you know, I started to embrace it more as part of my own identity. So it kind of plays into my own identity as well. But, mm. We're talking about language it's definitely a a part of me that was like you know like i have a skill that not very many people do aside from international chinese students and you know i joined a group called intervarsity christian fellowship mm-hmm. and it was predominantly asian so a lot of the people that we invited were you know from different asian backgrounds korean chinese Filipino, I believe, some Vietnamese people as well, a lot of others. Uh, so it was like a place for me to not only practice my Chinese too, but also a place of community. And I think it was really good to to be able to have that in, in college, because that was when I really realized, you know, Chinese is something that I actually want to learn and get better at. Like that was a time when I realized myself, like, no, I actually want to do this. And the way that I need to do this is by practicing speaking more. And I did that with a lot of the Chinese international students that I met. So it was, it was really good because they're like, wow, your Chinese is so good for being like American. I'm like, really? It sucks compared to everyone else that I've talked to. <laughs> they're like, no, oh, that's really good. I'm just, like, I'm so surprised and impressed. I'm like, wow. I'm like, huh. I've always had like mixed feelings about or mixed uh, responses from international students. Like at times it's like you speak Chinese and it's 
like when they hear it, you're like, oh, this he sounds really bad. It's it's terrible, and it's very discouraging to hear at times because I kind of feel this sort of like. Like ah,、uh, please stop speaking in Chinese. Just speak English. Like <laughs>、um, this Wait, kind of feeling. Wait, the feeling is coming from yourself or from the other students? It's more of like reading people's body language and their、oh. facial expressions that、mm-hmm. tell me like, like、mm, nah, like please don't speak Chinese anymore. Is the message that I receive、oh. from their body language, from their、okay. facial expressions? Got so、it. when I read those things, it's it's very discouraging. I'm like,、mm-hmm. okay, don't really want to speak Chinese anymore. But sometimes I will just force myself to because I'm like, this is me trying to learn and get better. And like expressing that to them as well has been helpful because it's like, you know, I get to share my story as well with them.、Mm-hmm. They get to share theirs, and you know, I I share with them that like, you know, I was I was born in an American culture. With Chinese parents, so I I live in two different worlds essentially,、mm-hmm. and I've only come to this realization that like you know I really want to use my Chinese language skills as a, a bridge to reach out to international students.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think through college that was also around the time when I decided to do a short term mission trip to Taiwan.、Mm-hmm. Uh, And that was a humbling experience because you know when I went there, like all the all the people that I met, the kids. So we did like an English camp there for them, and even the kids that spoke Chinese to me were making fun of my Chinese. <gasps> Real? Oh, that's mean. It was it was very humbling. I think there was actually one、uh, one day when I actually almost cried in front of. The group of kids that I was in charge of, because they were, they were actually pointing fingers at my Chinese and making fun of it. I was like, "Oh, jeez, like, ah,、oh, this doesn't feel good at all." Tell But, me more. Yeah, tell me more. Like, what happened? <laughs> so what happened?、Um, all I remember, honestly, was you know they were making fun of my Chinese. They started like making jokes. It's like wow, like you're already this old, and like your Chinese sucks so bad. And they're saying this in Chinese, and like I remember one of the 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 kids in my group actually stood up for me, and she was like saying like, wow, like how can you say that to the teacher? Like that's not very nice. Like I could see visibly on her face that she was like like angry and just like appalled by what other what other kids were saying. Like. How can you say this? Like, this she is, was defending you. Yeah, she was defending me, and like deep down inside, I could feel it. Like, I think that was like a part of me where I felt shame, like you know, like my own culture. And for a period of time, I was denying it. But then, when I'm in a different country that speaks this language, mainly, it was like, wow, I feel so humbled. Yet I was going into that mission trip as like a, you know, like, yeah, like I I want to do this because or like I'm doing this because I want to, like I I want to learn, I want to get better. I already、uh, dedicated this part of myself to being like, all right, you know, I'm just going to learn, I'm just going to、uh, take in as much as I can.、Uh, I was not expecting to be humbled like that. My kids, no less. I'm like, ah,、oh. <laughs> like, it's like,、oh, I want to, like. <laughs> I know kids can be the meanest sometimes. They they don't think before they speak. And、yeah. I have personal experience because I taught in elementary school for for one year, and then I also taught over here for the after school. So、mm. some of them are just mean. They.、Yeah. Oh, I feel sorry for you. Like, but I'm interested to know, like, why do you take it as a shame of not speaking good enough Mandarin? Because you never grew up in Taiwan or China, never in a like a good enough environment for you to learn the language fully. Yeah, so I think it was my inner voice speaking to me and like essentially accusing me of, you know. It's like, yeah, you want to get better, Sean, but like, you'll never be good enough to get better. And it wasn't so much 
like uh, what they said, what the kids said that was hurting me, but it was more of like a trigger. They said triggered something that was within me that like this part of your identity is, is something that you're trying to dissociate yourself from, but only now are you coming to terms with who you are as a Chinese American person living living in America and working out these two parts of your world. And so going into Taiwan and having that experience, I was like, man, like one, I realized, yeah, my Chinese does kind of suck and I do need to get better. Then two, I was like, you know, I was also processing what happened that day as well. I'm like, hmm, you know, like I am, this made me think about like the approach that I need to have, the sort of attitude that I need to have. And also just realizing, yeah, like as you said, Ping, you know, I'm in a country that mainly speaks Mandarin as their language. And so it, it is unfair to say that like, while well, your Chinese is so bad, like, because I didn't grow up there. And so I think a lot of time too, you know, I, I was at the English camp for the kids. And a lot of times, like I would ask them like, so can you speak English then? <laughs> And that, like, <laughs> what did that I say? Made, <laughs> the kids, the kids, their their eyes widened, and they're like, uh, "It's like, darn it! <laughs> Our team leader just shamed me." <laughs> and it's like you know, I would I would encourage them to speak English too, and because it was an English camp, and we were like also teaching them like Bible verses as well we would challenge them to speak it in English. And if they did, memorizing it in English, sorry, not just even speaking, but for some kids, it would just be like speaking because they were very shy. And so like if they did, we would reward them with more candy or more prizes, like a bonus prize for trying or uh, memorizing it. And, you know, I was I was impressed by some of the kids. Like they, they were able to memorize it in English. And I'm like, Wow, that is amazing. Yeah. Like, it takes a lot to uh, speak a different language that you're not used to, that you're not comfortable with. And like, you know, you're, you're coming face to face with failure, failure as an option. And it's like, oh, if I don't speak this well enough, what will people think of me? Like, oh, I, can I speak it? Like, I'm afraid I might butcher this word. Or, you know, my accent is too noticeable. And, I think part of me, you know, I saw that, I saw that in the kids as I saw that in myself in, when I speak Chinese. I need to probe a little bit because I felt that, you know, maybe there was a place that your shame uh, was related. Do, do you, did you ever hear anyone saying that, oh, like, um, you're a Chinese American, you should be able to speak Mandarin. What is the um, narrative around that that issue like when you were growing up oh well actually when I was growing up I didn't have that issue really it was like if I spoke Chinese most of the time people would be like I'm very surprised by you uh, you you Asian Americans like what I didn't know you guys spoke Chinese I thought all of you guys just spoke English and that's or like you would only know a little bit of Chinese so for the most part and I, I'm very blessed to have uh, had parents that cared about raising me up and learning their language. Because uh, granted, I didn't enjoy Chinese school, but, you know, it did help me be more aware and also just, I guess, gradually help me improve my speaking skills. Yeah, just because, like, you know, it's, it's, it's a part of who I am. So... Growing up, you know, I think a lot of, I suppose, what do you call, uh, what do you call them, like, main Chinese speakers, I suppose, um, you know, for them, they probably have in their mind that, like, mm -hmm. Chinese Americans, they don't, they don't speak Chinese, they're just, they're raised in American culture, they speak American culture, but mm. they don't really see that part of an Asian American. At least for me, maybe I might be special in that, like, <laughs> I am an exception. 
Yeah, I feel like there are different mindsets around、um, immigrants or second generation immigrants in the states. Some people just really want to dump their identity from their parents, like they want to be different. So they don't want to speak the home language, and they wanted to be immersed in the American culture in English fully, and that's that's just one thing.、Um, but I think it's interesting to hear your stories. That you just mentioned that actually I felt that you had a desire to become a bilingual, and、yeah. and even if you have you were not born and raised in any of the Mandarin.、Um, Countries, but then you still want to maintain that language and culture. And so, on top of that, you you actually just mentioned that that's part of your identity, being Chinese or Asian American. So then, I want to shift a little bit to this this section. It's so interesting to know why would you identify yourself as an Asian American. So today we listen to Sean's. Story Part One on languages, and next time we'll listen to his. Um, his his thoughts and stories around his identity and his race here in the U.S. Stay tuned. Thanks for listening to Chai with Ping. Let us hear your voices and stories. Please share this episode, like and follow us on Instagram at Chai with Ping. You can also email us at chaiwithping at gmail dot com. Till next time.